Right, what's happening guys and girls? Welcome back to the channel. This is going to be a sad video actually because I am coming to the end of having my electric vehicle. I've had the i4 M50 now for coming up for four months and it has been a journey. When I first started with this car, I genuinely didn't want to like it. I was like, no, electric is not my thing. What if I break down? What if it runs out of battery? What happens when these things set on fire? What about all of these questions that I have? Where does it come from? What's happening next? I'm never going to get used to it. I don't know if the infrastructure's there. I had all of these like different doubts that were going through me. After four months, I won't lie, I feel like a changed woman. The car was supplied to me by BMW and I worked with Podpoint to get around my... I guess it was like a fear of the infrastructure which surrounded electric. Obviously, I had my Podpoint home charger installed, which was a complete godsend because before I had that put in, I have to admit, I was a little bit sceptical about how far I could actually go with this thing. I have done some serious calculations after having this car for four months, and I was kind of looking at the money-saving aspect of having this car. And I can actually tell you, because I've got a G82 M4 on the drive at the minute, and I did some calculations, which I am going to put up on the screen now. So I actually worked out the maths, having had this car for the amount of time that I have. I've done about 2,662 miles from the delivery mileage that I had on it to now. And I worked it out. I'm going to put the calculations on the screen, just so you know I'm not making this up as I go along. It's cost me about £225.87p to run this car for the last 2,662 miles versus the M4, which would have cost me 789 pounds and 71 pence. So that is a saving of 563 pounds 84, straight there. And that's before I even sorted out my EV tariff uh, to do a night charge there. That would have actually put my savings up to 753 pounds and 41 pence, which is huge. Do you know what I mean? As that adds up over the year, that is saving an insane amount of money. And everyone's talking about fuel at the minute and how expensive it is. I know in my last video, we talked about how it was costing me about £650 just to do the runabout mileage that I was doing, not even using the car as a daily driver. This, I have to admit, has become a godsend in the sense of financial prosperity. I feel like I actually just used my business and economics degree to do something with it, finally. Bet you didn't know I got one of those, did you? So my last thing that I want to do is because I know there is another person in my life that's been a bit of a slightly EV skeptic, but somebody that I massively, massively respect his opinion because fair play to him. He's gone from like seeing ponies, ponies and carts to now like spaceships like these, which are EVs. And I think actually he's more receptive to it than I would have thought he would be. So I'm going to go pick up my dad. I'm going to show him around this car because I know he's actually really desperate to see it. He, he, he's very interested. He's kind of thinking maybe it's the one he should get. Maybe he should get an electric car for his missus. So I'm going to go pick dad up and let's go see what he thinks. And we'll go check out one of the charging stations, which are actually free at Tesco's because why not, eh? Free juice is free juice. Five minutes later. Mm. So a nice coffee. Delightful, dear. It's so silent, isn't it, when you get back in the car and realise it starts rolling forwards. It is. It's amazing. Um, I think... Um, it's comfortable, though. It sounds silly, but you get used to it, the silence, and then you get in a car again, which has got a really loud exhaust, and it's, it's really aggressive. You just forget how well, quiet... I think if you have your tunes on... Yeah. Um, you you, you uh, don't even notice that how silent it is. It's the impressive acceleration and the performance of the vehicle that you shines through to me. Yeah. And it's just, it still is a very comfortable well, executive car. Essentially, she's a four series, isn't it? Like, yeah. you know, take away the drive these, train in it. These seats are very comfortable. I know, you see more comfortable in it than those car oh, seats do. that was in the M4. Well, I have to be <laughs> levered out of those. I feel that I could escape out of this one under my own steam <laughs> just only a slight <laughs> just a short push to get the, to get the base over apex right. to get the, the moment to the center of gravity moving oh exactly though to be honest i won't lie it's very very comfortable in this car um I, it's hard to explain because you know when something is just really good does what it says on the tin. Exactly. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's not trying to be anything it, mad sexy. Well, it is supposed to be the M Division's first electric car. I know that. Yeah. And it is chronic fast. And I, I will show you in a minute, but I'll make yeah. sure you don't have your coffee in your hand. Yeah. 
But it just, as far as like driving to and from every day, picking your dad up, going to the gym, going to the shops, yeah. wherever, it is very comfortable. And I feel like I feel like I'm letting people down when I say that. Everyone wants me to hate it, but it's not a car that you go out to drive the NC500 in. But it is a car you that can, you take every single day. You can get very tired of extremist cars. Really, at the end of the day you need to achieve journeys in the most economical and um, comfortable way. And this seems to be a way to do that. But just to clarify, because I have to clarify this to all people, mm. we still love our V8s, our V10s and V12s. Uh, there is a place for both. We're, we're talking about now vehicles which are uh, for a commonplace and everyday usage and that you'll come to savour the outrageous V8 powered petrol driven vehicles which will become your hobby vehicles and you will have a great time with them and in fact you will be able to really really enjoy them. See I feel people are listening to you more than they'll listen to me because they always think that I'm just plugging an electric car because I've got one for a few months but honestly it's been quite a nice experience. The only problem for somebody of my era is that my phone is this one, which is not even, it's an old Nokia. And it, it, uh, the innovation on it is that it does texting. To be honest, I do feel like we are asking a lot of you if you have a phone like this. That's the only thing with electric cars, with apps and charging stations and things like that. It's, it's not quite, <laughs> well, a home charger and you'll be right there, Dad. I, I think a home charger and it'll keep me in at night. Oh, because you're so busy out nightclubbing these days. <laughs> <laughs> right, let's go charge this thing up. Tesco's and all of the free charging points are actually being taken up at the moment. So I will take this opportunity, Dad, to show you one of these ones, which is actually one of the 50 kilowatt chargers. So this is one of the fast chargers and how it works on the app and how easy it is to get charging. So grab the grab the charger. This one. Which one is it? <laughs> so plug this in. I will get it started on my app. There you go. There we go. You're plugged in now. So let me go to my app real quick. One sec. Okay, so this is where I had a little bit of an issue with my microphone. Um, so I'll just tell you what I said here anyway. Dad went in to get some sandwiches and some hula hoops, which are actually his favourite, so he could eat them whilst the car was charging for a few minutes. So I had a little look over at this BMW iX, which was in the free charging bay. Now, as you can see here, taking a quick look at the car, I think it's absolutely massive, but it was using the free charging point, which you can see here. If you just bring along your own charging cable that you would have with your car and just plug in, then you can use this charging network whilst you are just going into the shops. It's pretty easy. Uh, again, looking at the iX, kind of crazy looking machine. It's massive. Around 50% of PodPoint's public network is free to use. There's 500 Tesco stores in the UK which have these free charging points. Research from VW Tesco and PodPoint found EV owners could get over 1,000 miles of free driving each year from using complimentary charging networks. I mean, to me, that's a win-win. If you can get over 1,000 miles completely free for someone like my dad, who would probably just put into and from the shops using these charging networks, it actually works out to be, I don't know, a pretty good deal. As you can see here, he's discussing the fact that he thinks the iX is way too big and he's not quite sure. Um, and that he was maybe looking to buy an electric car himself for his wife, maybe one of these little 500Ds, and then I was just having a conversation saying, Dad, I think you're better off in a BMW than a Fiat 500e. And now he's doing what he always does. He takes pictures of me whilst I'm at work. This is very typical, Dad. Bless him. So, wasn't as difficult as you thought it might be? No, I think to own one of these will be um, quite, quite easy to do. 
uh, they're fast, they're economical, and uh, I, I think for me, of the older generation, the the mobile phone... Yeah, that's a bit of a situation, isn't it? Yeah. You just need to upgrade it, but I do understand. I think if you have the home charger, this is a very easy option for you. I think the home charger and keep the car topped up, and then you've always got 250, 300 miles um, available to you. I, I think for the majority of the motoring that I would do, uh, I, I have no fears about having an electric car, and I would enjoy the acceleration. And that's mad because I thought you'd be the last person on earth and I know the channel would be like oh my god what but I know that you were just saying to me like a second ago it's not that you want to swap or forget that you love you know your V8s, V10s, V12s it's just that they'll become a place for it right? I think it'll become your hobby car I, I plan to, to buy something with a V8 in it um, that w will be my car to enjoy uh, and I think if you'll thinking of having a, a car to in simply as a, a plaything, now's the time to do it. But to, to embrace the new technology um, is, a, is the most uh, efficacious way to do these things. Efficacious, what does that even mean? Effective. <laughs> well, there you go, <laughs> that's it. The word, that's the word from dad. If you're gonna buy something that you wanna have fun in, buy it now, but for running around, these aren't so bad. I'm amazed. <laughs> He's a convert. <laughs> oh God. That concludes my time with the i4 M50. Uh, my first experience with an electric car. A big, big thank you to PodPoint and also BMW for helping me out with this. I'm not gonna say transition because I still have something to say about the whole process. Have I saved a load of money? I absolutely have. Was it easier than I thought it was gonna be? It absolutely was. Do I feel differently out the back of this experience? Yes, I absolutely do. For day-to-day -day driving, and I must reiterate this point, for day-to-day -day driving, when you're doing a menial mileage, going from A to B, doing things that you just have to do as opposed to doing something that you're like driving for pleasure, an electric car is absolutely fine. Plug it in your house. The home charger is an absolute must. I would stress to anybody who's looking at anything EV, get yourself a smart charger at home. Pod points one is super easy with the app that you can use. You can keep an eye on how much money you're saving. Also, the network is great. If you're using the free charging network, you can actually get around a thousand miles free per year complimentary. So if I was you, that's free motoring. What's not to love about that? During this experiment, I used the pod point network exclusively. So that actually made my life a lot, lot easier because I knew the kind of charges that I was getting to and the machines and how they worked and that kind of stuff. So it does differ for people as you go outside of that network. But to be honest, once you use the app, you get used to it and really it's super duper easy. Using the free charging at the supermarkets, um, also the fast chargers at the supermarkets are perfect if you're out and about. And if you're going on trips, like when we went to Manchester, you can figure out your route. It's actually a lot easier than I thought it was gonna be. My big one thing about all of this, I loved the car because it was very quiet, clean, comfortable, smart looking machine. But as my dad said, if you're looking for a car that you want to enjoy the thrill of driving, the sights, the smells, the sounds, all of that. If you're looking at buying one, the one that you've had your eye on for years, the one that you've always thought about, dreamed about buying, now is the time to do it. Get yourselves that car so you can really truly enjoy it. Like a true petrol head on the weekends, that's gonna be me. I'll be out in my E92 M3 or the Porsche at the weekends, and then in the week, I don't see any, I don't see any reason why I wouldn't use an EV. It doesn't really bother me, to be honest. God, it feels strange even saying that. I say the couple of things that have challenged me during this journey, probably be people's opinions, trying to tell me that I'm not a petrolhead anymore because I drive an EV daily. It doesn't really bother me, but at the same time, it's kind of like, well, I do understand why. To me, switching to EV makes financial sense right now. So for people that want to go around being like, oh, it's not green and all the rest of it, it's more of a smart decision if you want to enjoy your cars at the weekend because the world is changing. That's it. Unfortunately, we can't go back to how things were before. It is changing. So I've just found that it was a way easier swap for me overall, but it was more people's opinions that kind of got in the way a little bit and made me think like, oh, am I actually going back on who I am? On second thoughts, no, I'm not. And second of all, the biggest thing that I came up against was charging points being full when I wanted to use them. Full disclosure, a couple of times I've gone to use the chargers and they're all completely full and I've had to wait an hour. But that's just how it is at the minute. 
With more EVs coming to the road equals more infrastructure, which means bigger networks. As I say, Podpoint's network has over 6,200 locations, and that's only gonna grow bigger over time. So to be honest, it's just a matter of time before these fast chargers are absolutely everywhere. Guys, I really hope you've enjoyed this journey. I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comments below. Also, make sure you do check out Podpoint. As I said, that home charge installation, a complete must if you're looking to do the same experiment that I just did. All the information will be in the description box below. Usual crack. Other than that, I'll see you guys super duper soon. Let's go back to seeing what it feels like to pay for fuel in an ICE engine all the time. I'll see you in the next video. Bye.